I'm Austin Peterson. Welcome to the Freedom Report, broadcasting from the Los Angeles skyline. Hello friends, welcome to a special episode of the Freedom Report. I'm in Runyon Canyon Park at sunset over Los Angeles, where bad traffic and transportation options aren't the only thing crippling the in initiative of California citizens and entrepreneurs. No, California's problems run much deeper with a state government that's $399 billion in debt and looking for options to plug holes in a budget deficit of around $28 billion. That's the total general fund budget of 12 other states combined. California legislators risk not getting a pay raise if they don't find a way to close the gap this year. But it hardly matters. They are already the highest paid legislators in the country averaging over $90,000 a year in annual salary. So what do these California state lawmakers have in mind to create jobs and solve transportation problems? Simple. Build high-speed rail transport from LA to San Francisco at the cost of $68 billion and another line costing $4.6 billion starting from Victorville to terminate in Las, in Las Vegas. But don't worry if you haven't heard of Victorville. Most Southern Californians haven't either has given this project the unfortunate name of the train to nowhere. And what's worse, the Victorville to Las Vegas line proposed by Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid would cost about a hundred bucks by the time you actually get to it. Never mind the fact that flights from LA to Vegas are usually less than a hundred bucks. But wouldn't putting a train in the middle of nowhere at least stimulate the economy of Victorville? Maybe. But here's a story of, by French philosopher Frederick Bastiat, who argued a similar case against the stimulus economists of his day. In France, in the early part of the 19th century, a train line from Paris to Bayonne was proposed. Lawmakers at the time suggested it would stimulate the economy of local towns if the train was forced to stop in towns like Bordeaux along the way. After all, wouldn't it be in the public interest for tourists to be forced and stopped to pay for hotels, porters, and cartage along the way? Wouldn't this stimulate the economy of the town? Frederick Bastiat asked, why just stop at Bordeaux? Why not also at Poitiers, Tours, or Orleans? Wouldn't that also be in their public interest? In fact, he said, why not just have a railroad composed of just a whole series of breaks along the way? Or how about a negative railroad? What Bastiat was arguing was that politicians were sacrificing the needs of the consumer to benefit the producer. And with the fact that Senator Harry Reid's cronies are the ones pushing for the train to nowhere, we know just whose economies he's trying to stimulate. But let's not get confused. It's not to say that a rail transport system might not be in the best interests of Californians. Libertarians just argue that it's better left to private interests to fund projects for the public good. Bastiat argued that socialism confuses the distinction between government and society. As a result of this, every time libertarians object to a thing being done by government, socialists conclude that we must object to it being done at all. If we disapprove of state education, socialists say that we are opposed to any education. If we're opposed to government roads, they wonder who will build the roads. If we object to a state-run rail transport, they say we must be against any form of rail transport. But it's time we put these straw men aside and start a real conversation on how to solve our budget problems. Former President and Governor of California, Ronald Reagan, once described the United States as a shining city on a hill. But as our country goes bankrupt, it's getting harder to see how we can live up to that reputation. One way, though, might, to be, might be to follow the advice of people like Frederick Bastiat, who said, the solution to problems of human relationships is to be found in liberty. And if we embrace liberty, we might once more say, it's morning in America again. I'm Austin Peterson. Thank you for watching a special episode of the Freedom Report.